Hi, this is Mark Willows from Clocks for Classics and I just want to show you a short video on how to test the solenoid coils on Smith's and Jaeger car clocks. Uh, now I've got a Smith's clock mechanism in front of me now and uh, this is the solenoid coil and sometimes these do fail with age and uh, there's a couple of ways to test these. If you have the solenoid coil st still fitted inside the clock mechanism then one easy way is uh, simply to uh, connect the clock to a power supply. You see I've got it connected with some crocodile clips there. You need to observe the correct polarity according to the polarity of your clock. And uh, when you've done that, then you just need to short this pin here. Let me see that, that, that pin here. You need to short that to the body uh, of the clock. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to short it against this um, solenoid pillar here it's a convenient place and when I short that you should be able to see the balance and wheel move there you see all that there now if that moves then then the solenoid is certainly okay if it doesn't move um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the solenoid's failed it may be that the uh, clock mechanism is, uh, is is dirty and not able to move so if it doesn't it doesn't move then you need to uh, investigate further but if it does move uh, that certainly says that the solenoid is okay. So, if you've tried that test and the balance wheel didn't move, uh, what do we do next? Well, for any for the next test, you need to remove the solenoid from the clock mechanism. Now, before you do that, it's a very good idea uh, to put some super glue just around just around where the wires. The two places where the wires go into the solenoid body here and let that super glue dry just put a drop of glue there and that will ensure that you don't um, strain the internal windings of the solenoid when you remove it so once you've done that and the glue's dry um, then you need to disconnect the two wires uh, from the clock mechanism and they're held in place with these little collars here and if you get a screwdriver underneath those you can just prise them up they prise up quite easily there's one on the top there, and uh, there's another one. I don't know if you can see it. It's just just down there. So you prise those off, and uh, then you undo these two uh, nuts here, and then you can lift the solenoid off. So I'm going to do that now, and then we'll we'll test it on the bench. Okay, I've got the solenoid removed now, and I'm going to use a multimeter to test it. So I've got the meter um, set to uh, to ohms and uh, I'm just going to put the probes onto the two connections, doesn't matter which way around you put them. And you can see I've got a reading of 860 ohms and that means that solenoid is fine. So they are typically around 850 ohms but it doesn't really matter greatly anything from sort of 750 to 950 is fine. If your solenoid has failed, um, then what you'll see is a very high reading, or typically uh, the meter will show uh, what we call open circuit, and it will typically show something like uh, something like that. It will show OL, which means overload. So that's how you test the solenoid. Now, if your solenoid is failed, um, there's a, a couple of ways forward. Sometimes if you unwrap the, uh, the tape around the solenoid, uh, you can look inside and there may be uh, a break between the outer wire and the very fine uh, inner wire, inner winding wires. And sometimes if the break's on the outer end, you can resolder that. Uh, if, that's, if you unwind it in the, and there isn't a break on the outside, then we can supply uh, new rewound solenoids, which we, we rewind ourselves, um, ones like this. Okay, so thank you for watching, and I hope that's been helpful.